assignments. So I shortly would like to convey information on um, what will be the flow of the presentation. So I will introduce two topic with digital transformation. Then I will convey some uh, case studies on digital transformation, and I will attempt to reveal on uh, which fields of our life uh, uh, it might be effective. Um, then soon after, I will talk about how uh, amount of data is increasing and how establishments uh, create value through uh, data. And of course, I will talk about the big data and try to draw a clear framework um, for this term um, in order to establish a connection between big data and storytelling process. Um, I will convey information on basics of uh, brand storytelling. So, uh, in last phase, I will inform you uh, about your assignments and uh, I will answer your questions regarding the presentation or assignments. So, when it comes to assignments of last week, I'm sure you are a bit curious about what I'm uh, thinking about these assignments. So, I received really successful papers from all teams. Um, except one. Uh, one team didn't uh, upload any paper or something. So I can see that you used your maximum energy to be creative and I have to uh, confess that your ideas on papers uh, are quite creative actually. Uh, most of them seems uh, quite professional and it can be uh, clearly used by any agency or company uh, in their uh, real-time work or uh, daily, uh, daily work. Uh, on the other side of the coin, um, at first glance, only problematic uh, on papers is explaining the features of social media channels instead of uh, how these features can be useful in content marketing strategy or uh, describing how existing brand is using this thing instead of what would you do if you were content marketing manager of the chosen brands uh, or your imaginary brand. So I'm taking notes about your uh, assignments. As soon as uh, possible, I will share your, uh, I will share uh, my comments about your assignments and uh, will enter the grade to system. So I think we can start to this week's uh, topics. Uh, but before start uh, walking in the jungle of uh, big data uh, and knowledge discovery or data mining, um, is it possible to confirm me that uh, all participants can hear me? Okay, great. Great, I see positive answers. Okay, so second slide. I can simply say that digital transformation has a remarkable importance on today's technology-centric world. So process of digital transformation has effect on various institutions of different kind and scales. Uh, in addition, uh, impact of digital transformation also being felt on societies. Um, I mean, every single dynamics of society uh, is influenced by uh, this aforementioned digital transformation, actually. And it is clearly possible to observe influence of digital transformation on daily life of regular citizens um, or on global business atmosphere and of course on practice of communications. Um, I can say that uh, the influence of uh, digital transformation is felt on all disciplines of communications from journalism to public relations, from advertising, 
to digital advertising or everything. So, for instance, several important digital businesses such as Facebook, Amazon or Skyscanner have been rising in the scene and these new digital businesses are operating in different industries and we are able to see them in every aspect uh, of the business life actually. There are several uh, digital companies which are operating in every sector and I can say that core concept of these businesses um, is translating a daily practice such as communicating, um, shopping or buying flight tickets um, into digital manner um, and various institutions of um, different kind and scales such as research centers um, uh, non-profit organizations and international associations have been creating data centers in order to store every single uh, byte of their data and of course they uh, somehow extract value out, out of this data so because data is some kind of new energy source of transformed societies and data products have high amount of added value comparing to classical industrial products. So this is why we are um, hearing the quotes uh, which says uh, data is new oil. So <clears throat> as I have told before, traditional concepts of daily activities have been transforming um, individuals are able to buy public transportation tickets by SMS in several countries instead of joining the queue in front of a kiosk or an automat and I'm sure this method is much more convenient to spend minutes for buying a ticket in a dark rainy day so or another example um, various uh, eye-catching developments uh, have been appearing in the field of smart city and home technologies such as monitoring free park slots by means of sensors and uh, these sensors and system actually uh, generally uh, reporting free spaces via smartphone of the drivers so this is quite useful technology, I can say that. So then, because uh, you won't look for empty slots and so on, then you will be informed before uh, you approach to parking area or something like that. So you will be able to see that on the map, which you can see on slide actually. So I can see that this smart city technology for uh, parking is quite useful. So also, it is possible to indicate that smart floor system of IBM is a remarkable example in context of the smart home technologies. Um, the system can recognize pattern of movements on it and in case of an emergency situation, it is able to call the ambulance. Um, as you can see, these kind of uh, technologies increase the quality of our life actually it can uh, one day save our life maybe so even politics have been transforming digitally uh, there is quite good example for that um, which comes from a tiny Baltic country with 1.3 millions of population um, I'm talking about Estonia. Uh, Estonia and Finland have signed the world's first international uh, electronic agreement. Um, okay, uh, they are not too far from each other actually. However, uh, signing an agreement by sitting in different cities, uh, different countries' uh, capital um, in Tallinn and Helsinki still interesting and. Um, 
we have to pay attention to these developments uh, because I can say that I see these agreements uh, which is similar to Treaty of Kadesh. You know, it is uh, one of the first signed international uh, agreement in history. And I can say that this um, digital international agreement is somehow revolutionary for history of mankind. And it shows us how um, digital transformation uh, might have influence uh, on the world. So as it portrayed uh, above uh, in aforementioned cases, uh, several components of daily life have been digitalizing um, in large or small scales. Um, digital transformation process has uh, several results. However, the most significant result of this transformation is rapid growth in amount of data. For instance, according to Turner and his friends, digital universe is doubling in size every two years. And by the year 2020, the data we create and copy annually um, will reach uh, 44 zettabytes. And uh, this is equal to 44 trillion gigabytes. This prediction cr clarifies uh, that the amount of data increases faster than we think. As it is mentioned before, um, data collection efforts of different establishments also contribute to this process. A blog post which is written in 2012 um, indicates that NASA have been gathering approximately 1.73 gigabytes of data from nearly 100 active missions. And Skytland states that, uh, states that uh, in in the time it took to read a sentence uh, that consists of 10 words, uh, they uh, receive uh, several amounts of uh, data, collect several amounts of data from the uh, project they conduct. And according to McAfee um, and his friends, it is estimated that Walmart collects uh, more than 2.5 uh, petabytes of data every hour from its customer transactions. Uh, a petabyte is uh, one quadrillion bytes, and or in other words, it is equivalent of uh, about 20 million filing cabinets worth of text. So, in context of the webinar, um, contribution of individuals to data growth must be also underlined, um, daily life of regular citizens has been gradually digitalizing. Uh, you can uh, guess it from uh, your daily life too, actually. So because uh, people's methods of uh, reaching information, doing sports, shopping, and interpersonal communication have been radically transforming and it just uh, started to transform into digital manner and it is necessary to provide some data in order to portray um, this situation actually. It is um, first of course uh, I will uh, talk about uh, internet so it is possible to indicate that internet user population uh, has developed uh, enormously since last 15 years um, based on the data which is provided by the uh, World Bank among OECD countries 78 out of 100 people have access to internet in 2014 um, while it was uh, 20 out of 100 people in 1999 and according to report which is published by Pew Research Center, um, smartphone ownership rates have skyrocketed in many countries since 2013. And I also have to say that the report clearly underlines that smartphone ownership rates in emerging and developing nations are rising at an extraordinary rate. 
climbing from a median of uh, 21% in 2013 to 37% in 2015. So another report of the Pew uh, Research Center reveals that um, across the 40 countries surveyed, a median of 76% of internet users say that uh, they use social networks. This is a huge amount of uh, people, actually. And can you imagine uh, um, how much data they can create in a daily uh, basis? So regarding to, uh, these data, actually, uh, it is possible to suggest that individuals are more engaged with um, new technologies. So this situation uh, somehow creates a world which is connected digitally. And consequently, data creation and flow of data between uh, individuals and individuals, individuals and establishments, and establishments and establishments via new technologies increase. And of course, it creates a new concept of interaction. So therefore, amount of data rapidly increases. So, and it gains value in several fields in the same speed. Um, it's a kind of cycle, you know, um, you are just uh, transforming into digital methods, for example, in communicating, and then you are just starting to create data and just uh, someone creating value through the data which is created. And it's a kind of cycle, as I mentioned. So actually, um, there are several interesting uh, cases about uh, creating value through data. So, and I can say that data is of paramount importance for many establishments, uh, such as businesses, research centers, international organizations, NGOs, or startups. Um, an example from Filter Bubble. Uh, which is book of um, Eli Parizar, provides an effective case for this. Um, according to Parizar, while you read books on popular book reading device Kindle, the data, such as uh, phrases you highlight, which page, page you turn, and how you read books are feedback uh, into Amazon service and can be used to indicate what books you might like next. So efficient data analysis allows businesses and startups to understand their current situation and make predictions uh, for the future. Research centers able to develop more detailed research um, about this issue um, with the data, of course, and well-analyzed data allows international organizations and NGOs to develop better situation analysis on a specific topics. These show that actors who store and analyze data properly have um, potential to extract information out of it. And information uh, means value. And this means that they are able to create value out of data in line with their purposes. Therefore, it adds uh, value to societies. And another example uh, sets light on how high amount of data can expand boundaries of scientific research topics. Uh, a research was appeared on uh, Facebook data science blog in honor of uh, International Cat Day. So within the scope of uh, the research, by the way, you can see some results of this uh, research uh, on slide right now. So within the um, context of uh, the research, Burke and uh, friends of him have revealed interesting insights about cat owners and dog owners by using the identified uh, data from a sample of uh, about 160,000 uh, people uh, in the United States who shared uh, photos of cats or dogs uh, or both on Facebook. 
can you imagine thousands of people, uh, people's data were analyzed in order to understand uh, characteristic features of cat owners and dog owners. So just imagine, so sometimes we are trying to conduct a research um, and we are using survey technique and how hard uh, uh, is reaching to 100 people or 200 people to conduct the survey research. And uh, right now we have huge ability to um, conduct research with thousands of, I mean, hundreds of thousands of uh, people's data. So these new technologies and huge amount of data gives this opportunity to us. And when it comes to, when it comes to research, um, which is conducted by Facebook, uh, findings respond to questions such as um, which one of them is more outgoing, cat owners or dog owners? Uh, which kind of book and movies they interested in, and uh, where they live in the United States? So actually, this is uh, quite interesting research for me. And as a result of uh, digital transformation uh, and following developments and adoption of new technological inventions to daily life, several data sources um, appeared on the uh, scene and data started to flow uh, constantly in different formats. Um, size and speed uh, from these sources and um, consequently the concepts of uh, or the term of uh, big data have come under light. In next slides the term of uh, big data will be um, handled and area of usage of it will be portraits and short introduction to how big data can contribute to storytelling process uh, will be done. <clears throat> so, when it comes to um, the term big data, um, it was first coined in late 90s by NASA researchers Michael Cox and David Ellsworth. Um, Cox and his friend uh, have defined big data as following. Um, according to them, data sets are generally quite large, taxing the capacities of main memory, local disk, and even remote disk. We call this uh, the problem um, in apostrophe uh, of big data. Based on the given definition, it is possible to suggest that big data is recognized as a challenge more than an opportunity at the beginning. In following studies, researchers have proposed several definitions for describing big data in more structural form and in structural definitions it is possible to develop an understanding on components of the term big data. Ethan and friends of him proposed um, one of the most quoted proposition uh, on components of big data. According to them, big data has uh, three main characteristics. These are volume, uh, you can uh, say terabytes and zettabytes to this, and variety. Um, it is the form of the data actually, is it structured or unstructured, and velocity. Um, regarding the concept, Volume defines the size of uh, the data and it is possible to indicate that measures such as megabyte or gigabyte falls really short uh, in order to describe the size of big data. Second component of big data variety uh, points out structured or unstructured form, uh, forms and different formats in data. <clears throat> different tools might be used in order to collect data, such as automatic doors, barcode scanners, phone cameras, sensors, or satellites on space. 
and starting from this point, different forms and formats of data has been arising due to different devices are used in order to collect data. And lastly, uh, and that is why we are receiving uh, structured and un unstructured data, and also that is why we are uh, receiving uh, different formats of data, actually. And this just causes variety in the data. So lastly, uh, velocity of data refers to data flow speed. Um, in addition to four mentioned components, uh, Panir Selvam and his friends suggest uh, that it is essential to add two more components, um, veracity and value. According to them, veracity relates to the uncertainty of data within uh, data a data set. So, on the other hand, they underline that value is one of the important uh, elements of uh, big data because uh, there is no point in a big data solution unless it is aimed at creating social or business value. So, Chobani and his friends approach from a business point of view to concept of big data and their perspective recognizes big data as an um, as an opportunity. Um, their definition of big data uh, attaches importance to philosophical dimension of it, and they define big data as following. According to them, big data is more than simply a matter of size it is an opportunity to find insights in new and emerging types of data and contents to make businesses more agile and to answer questions that were uh, previously considered beyond our reach. They are actually not alone in this kind of approach. According to Schoenberger and his friends, actually there is one speech of Schoenberger uh, in our LMS. You can watch it. Um, it is quite good uh, speech actually, and it is some kind of uh, abstract of the book he wrote. So according to Schoenberger and his friends, uh, big data is about three interconnected change of uh, mentality. First of them, big data is ability of analyzing huge amount of data. Second, it is willingness to accept real life mess instead of being have to accept exclusive certainty of data. And last, big data is feeling respect to correlations instead of constantly searching um, casualty, causality. Um, on the other hand, comparison chart of Davenport is vital in order to develop a perspective on what are the challenging and beneficial parts of big data. Davenport proposes a comparison which reveals distinction between big data and traditional analytics. Um, in the following table uh, on the, the slide, you can see differences between big data and traditional analytics, actually. So, as you can see, big data has unstructured uh, data formats, but traditional analytics has uh, formatted in rows and columns. You can just imagine it uh, as um, basic MySQL tables or Excel tables. So it is the most simple way you can imagine it. And volume of data, um, 100 terabytes to petabytes in big data. Uh, but when it comes to traditional analytics, it is tens of uh, terabytes or less. And when it comes to flow of data, uh, there is constant flow of data in big data, uh, in logic of the big data. And, but in the other side, there is static pool of the data. And big data uh, needs and analyzes methods which uh, use machine learning. Uh, but the traditional analytics are inclined to have a uh, hypothesis-based uh, perspective. 
And when it comes to uh, big data's primary purpose, it is data-based products, um, but uh, traditional analytics is uh, more used for internal decisions, uh, decision supports and services, actually. So, <clears throat> actually, big data creates several opportunities uh, in spite of the fact that it contains several complex issues in its nature, such as, uh, such as disliking the personal privacy. Uh, sometimes it puts a danger, personal privacy. Uh, put uh, personal privacy into danger, and this is uh, quite huge problematic for big data, actually. Uh, but on the other hand, as I told, there are several opportunities which are created by big data. So the most significant advantage uh, which is provided by big data is uh, knowledge discovery, extraction of information from huge amount and variety of data present uh, several advantages. Of course, there are several challenges uh, while mining these data, uh, but when it comes to advantages, um, there are several of them too. Um, at this stage, it is possible to mention about uh, knowledge discovery in databases, which is shortly called as KDD, and Fayad and his friends describe uh, KDD as an interdisciplinary implementation area, and following statements of them clearly verifies that. Uh, knowledge discovery in databases has evolved and continues to evolve from the intersection of research files such as machine learning, pattern recognition, uh, databases, statistics, artificial intelligence, knowledge acquisition for expert systems, data visualization, and high-performance computing. The unifying goal is extracting high-level uh, knowledge from low-level data in the context of large data sets. So, based on the statement, it is necessary to have interdisciplinary perspective in order to extract knowledge from the data, um, data, I mean, in big or small scale. And this interdisciplinary feature of knowledge discovery also creates a theoretical ground for use of big data analysis uh, in order to develop brand stories. <clears throat> As it is narrated above, big data has been used by many different organizations in various cases. And I would like to share some cases from Schoenberger's book um, because they uh, simply shows that um, how big data um, can create value um, for businesses and for digital startups, for um, different sectors of the uh, business ecosystem. So I will just uh, start talking about the cases. So for instance, um, Washington Hospital Center has been storing anonymized uh, records of patients for seven years. This data um, has been including demographic information, tests, diagnosis reports, and treatments. And these records have been analyzed in order to decrease ratio of infections and revisits to the hospital. And these efforts have revealed very interesting findings and correlations. Findings showed that psychological state of patients um, is vital. If medical history of a specific patient were containing a word uh, such as depression at his or her first application to hospital, it is revealed that this patient is more likely to revisit hospital in one month after his or her treatment completed. 
So you can see that um, how valuable correlations can be uh, found by mining the big data. And I can say that UPS is another example for successful big data analytics. So you can find uh, many cases like this in Schoenberger's book, actually. So UPS collects uh, data from uh, several sources, and such as engine of the post chase, GPS, which captures driver behavior and safety habits, um, sensors, devices, which monitors deliveries and customer service, and maps, which collects address points and routes traveled. Sensors capture over 200 data points for more than 80,000 vehicles. As a result of this process, UPS saved 39 million gallons of fuel since 2001 and 12.1 million miles of driving eliminated in 2012. And this was a kind of uh, infographic, actually. And you can find this thing uh, on the internet. So you can uh, get really uh, interesting insights about these cases from that shared uh, infographic. So according to Kissmetrics, um, Netflix, the online movie streaming platform, collects tremendous amount of data from its over 83 million customers, consumers. So the company collects data such as um, when you pause, rewind, or fast forward, um, when you pause and leave content, and if you ever come back, or browsing habits and scrolling behavior, and what time you watch the content. So Netflix uses these data in order to create loyal consumers. Extracted knowledge from data allows Netflix to learn watching habits of its members. The movie streaming website uses this knowledge to develop an algorithm which automatically recommends movies to its consumers. A tweet which was sent by Netflix proves that um, their recommendation algorithm functions efficiently because it is written 75% Netflix viewing is driven by the recommendation algorithm of Netflix. So I'm highly uh, stating that you should uh, read the post in Kissmetrics, which is related to Netflix uh, recommendation algorithm. It is really interesting blog post, post actually. So on the other hand, uh, social networks and search engines generally have uh, business models uh, which uses data as raw material. For example, Facebook collects huge amount of data from different sources. According to a news on Washington Post, um, Facebook tracks 99, 98 different personal data of its members. It is possible to indicate that even simple activities of a member, such as hiding an advertising or clicking a like button or marking something as spam on Facebook uh, might be a signal for the platform. So this data might be used in order to create uh, content and personalize news feeds of the users. And these developments are important in order to strengthen user engagements. In addition, it is vital um, for placing targeted and personalized advertising. So big data anal analytics uh, has been widely used by retail and e-commerce industry, actually. I watched really uh, interesting uh, interview video about Etsy, um, and I can uh, say that uh, based on the interview, peer-to-peer -peer shopping website Etsy is one of the examples for this uh, in e-commerce industry. Etsy has been utilizing two main sources of data. First of them is transactional data, such as purchasing data and membership data, and second data source is 
bigger, um, which contains data on behavior of uh, visitors, such as clicks on home page or text written to search box. So Etsy has been using this data in order to conduct better decision making, product development, and marketing and PR, of course. Regarding the concept, um, it is possible to suggest that big data and data analytics might be used in context of the storytelling as it is possible to use for product development, marketing, or PR. <clears throat> As I um, mentioned in aforementioned cases, um, size of uh, the data in databases of companies has been increasing rapidly. While companies storing more and more bytes in their databases, they open uh, the door of various opportunities, actually. Information which is extracted by analyzing data brings several advantages. So as it is underlined in the previous sections, um, areas of usage of data have almost no boundaries. And in this context, it is possible to suggest that big data analytics might be used in order to produce branded stories and develop a storytelling process too. However, firstly, uh, definition and components of a story must be clarified. And then importance of the story for brands must be described. Um, because in this article, story and storytelling will be approached from uh, branding uh, perspective in this webinar, uh, sorry. So story and storytelling will be approached from a branding perspective. So story is um, one of the oldest, oldest information uh, transmission technique. So today, stories have been used more strategically from education to branding. Um, actually, uh, if you delve into transmedia storytelling while you are uh, reading uh, materials on LMS, so you can understand that it is just used for almost everything. So, and according to Miller, story can be defined as a series of events. So when it's uh, when story is uh, approached from a branding perspective, it is important to establish ties between brands and elements of the story, and this is an important step in order to increase efficiency of storytelling process. Miller points out that a story has eleven different elements, elements. So those elements are characters, place, time, storyline, sensory elements such as smells, flowers, colors, etc. Um, objects such as clothing and costume and characters, gestures, and attitudes, emotions, narrator's point of view, narrator's tone of voice, and theme. So, it is possible to suggest that these elements might be tailored in terms of the brand story based on the features of target audience. So, Sarat describes the practice of storytelling as following. Um, storytelling is the vivid description of ideas, beliefs, personal experiences, and life lessons through stories or narratives um, that evoke powerful emotions and insights. Based on this definition, it is clear that story might allow brands to catch beneficial opportunities because uh, stories have warm communication aspects and they are efficient tools in order to transmit information in more personalized context. So, Sarat underlines that analysis might excite the mind, but it doesn't uh, offer an easy route to the heart. So, this proposition uh, verifies that well-designed brand story is a good tool to deliver brand aura to target audience. 
and because according to proposition of Fogg and his friends, um, individuals are inclined to navigate the world using uh, symbols and visual expressions, and a brand story is efficiently able to deliver all these aspects, actually. <clears throat> so, it is a necessity for brands to create uh, stories and myths in order to strengthen their image and reputation in context of the postmodern societies. Because individuals in postmodern societies tend to buy a product uh, because of the story and image it has instead of the need it fulfills. So at this stage, it is important to develop a perspective on features of postmodern individual in postmodern societies in order to develop 360 degree understanding on why stories and storytelling matter for brands. So Jorgensen and his friend describe consumer and consumer behavior as following. Today, in the postmodern world, the individual is in focus. Now the consumer is in control. The individual defines him or herself through individualist conception and thereby shapes his or her own, her own reality. This conception is a product of our cognitive and emotional states and reflects our values and stances on various subjects, e.g. our attitude to the environment. Um, Postmodernism emphasizes that quality alone is not sufficient to capture the attention and loyalty of the customers. Value to the postmodern customer lies in the connected value and image that both the products, brand, and the corporation signify. According to Popeshield, consumers have direct influence on production and they have individuality which is divided into several different personalities. This situation makes consumers highly unpredictable. On the other hand, division of individuality has disbanded um, mass community uh, feeling actually. So according to him, fellowship feeling is provided by the conception. So consumers become member of a specific community by uh, buying specific brands. And actually this illustrates uh, the situation of postmodern uh, consumer um, really well. So regarding the four mentioned concepts, brand stories have vital importance for uh, individual individualizing uh, brands. So on the other hand, storytelling able to strengthen position of a brand on consumers' minds. So for instance, a brand which sells bottled water has nearly no option to differentiate its product. At this stage, creating a brand story makes an appearance and a regular bottled water transforms into a bottled water which comes from Alps in mind of the consumers. So another example can be uh, proposed from relatively niche industry, uh, spray paint. So popular wisdom on spray paints is that they are mostly used in context of the industrial activities or uh, fixing works. Uh, however, specific brands such as MTN Colors, Montana Cans, uh, position themselves uh, as spray paints which are mostly used by fine art practitioners or graffiti artists or street artists. So it is possible to see videos on their social network pages or blog posts um, which build a connection between spray paints and street art culture. Um, this clearly shows that stories are uh, useful in order to differentiate and position brands. 
So positioning and differentiation process uh, by means of well-designed stories um, allow brands to have loyal customers. So. <clears throat> On the other hand, um, since um, stories might be beneficial in order to create fellowship feeling, they can build emotional contact with consumers too. Chan and friends have quoted Zemke's following idea, a good story touches something familiar within us, yet shows us something new about our lives or our worlds. So in this context, it is possible to suggest that stories can trigger the emotions of the individuals and this aspect of the stories um, able brands to have more active and engaging consumers. Therefore, brands might easily open new communication channels and concepts um, with the target audience. And this allows to add new aspects to stories and strengthen them. Um, for instance, a consumer might see a Twitter post of a brand and start to follow the brand on Instagram and brand can deliver visual content to costume consumer. So this situation might allow brand to strengthen its storytelling process because consumers start to see visual posts too. Um, Zoll and friends of him evaluated uh, storytelling in terms of the internal communications, actually. So, however, benefits of uh, stories might be valid for brand consumer interaction, too. Uh, they suggest that stories are high leverage ways of reaching a large audience, and stories are hand the way to share culture and norms uh, in moments with new group members and um, creating relationships and sharing wisdom. On the other hand, Sarat points out uh, several important benefits of the stories, such as making abstract concepts uh, meaningful, help connect people and ideas, create sense, coherence and meaning, and communicating complex messages simply, and inspiring change. So based on the given information, uh, several benefits might be gained from storytelling um, in terms of the branding efforts. So well-designed stories might allow brands to um, might allow brands to um, reach um, to larger audience because, as it is indicated, um, stories might open new communication channels and they can strengthen themselves. So, in addition, good stories help to make content on social networks more visible. Stories can be used in order to create word of mouth and because they address emotions of consumers. On the other hand, brand aura might be transmitted to target audience via stories and stories are good materials in order to transmit culture, values, and image of the brand to specific target audience. And as it is mentioned, they can decrease the complexity of the branded messages. This is critical in today's um, fast-flowing society, actually. And as it is underlined, uh, stories might uh, mend the broken relationships between brand and target audience. Uh, this verifies that in context of a crisis, stories might be useful. Um, in addition, in digital era, humanization of a brand carries exponential importance and stories are a good way to humanize the brands because it can provide a tie between uh, brands and their target audience. Last but not least, uh, stories are functional in order to create fellowship and community feeling. And this is very important in context uh, of the postmodern society and postmodern consumer, actually. Um, as it is narrated, uh, usage areas of big data 
um, expands gradually. And based on the uh, given literature, uh, I would like to present a proposition on uh, how big data analysis might uh, contribute to process of storytelling and enrich this um, process with uh, data supported and analysis supported efforts. Um, in following slides, possible contributions of big data to storytelling will be discussed, actually. And it would be really awesome if you join this discussion too. So I can say that today um, every brand supports its communication efforts with branded stories. And every step of the communication management uh, process is supported by data analytics. And especially within the digital communication efforts, uh, this situation is uh, more visible. So according to Fogg and his friends, uh, I can say that this is one of the most used uh, storytelling source uh, in the literature. Um, according to Fogg and his friends, uh, establishments do not compete on parameters such as product design or technical finees. They propose that um, real challenge is building uh, solid values. Just remember this bottled water uh, example that I mentioned. So storytelling gains importance when it comes to transmitting these values to um, target audience and to values allow individuals to define themselves uh, in society. So at this stage, developing an understanding um, towards needs of the target audience and having knowledge of how individuals in target audience would like to define themselves um, carry enormous amount of importance. So it is possible to suggest that big data analytics might assist this process. Brands are able to collect data from several sources such as social network comments, loyalty cards, CRM systems, customer feedbacks, and surely these SARS are not limited with the uh, mentioned ones. So an interdisciplinary approach in order to extract knowledge from collected data and finding common patterns uh, might enlighten what are the expectations of the consumers from the brand. And these techniques might be used in order to define current situation or uh, modeling predic predictions on the consumers. And this will add great value to brand and brand story, uh, I think. After identifying the needs of individuals um, in target audience with the help of big data analysis, um, elements of brand story and storytelling process can be rise on stronger grounds because it is possible to understand that which kind of components might be more efficient. For instance, by analyzing social media check-ins of individuals um, in target audience might give clues about where stories should be take place or analysis of loyalty card data can give uh, clues on um, what the characters of the branded story uh, should be. Um, on the other hand, as it is indicated, identity of individuals have been divided in postmodern societies. As a result of this uh, process, as Popishal indicated, uh, mass community feeling is lost and fellowship feeling is brought by consumption. So big data analytics might allow brands to understand which kind of fellowship feeling is desired by the individuals in target audience. And we have seen how dog owners and cat owners daily habits and some demographic information are identified in detail within the research done by Facebook Research Center. So big data analytics might provide similar insights um, to brands uh, in the process of creating a brand story, for example. Uh, they can develop a 360 degree perspective on their target audience and their habits. So then they can create a story by using this information, uh, which provide fellowship feeling. 
And after composing uh, the story, big data analytics might be used in order to decide on how storytelling process will work strategically and which channels might be more efficient for disseminating the story. So data can be collected from several sources, as I told, uh, such as Google Analytics data, social network interactions, reports from conventional channels, and obviously count kind of physical store, and these examples must be multiplied, of course. And after analyzing um, collected data, brands might reach the efficient results for determining the dissemination channel of branded stories. On the other hand, in case branded stories published on digital channels, data such as how long they stay on the site, which channels direct more visitors, or how many pages they visit on the website can be tracked. And this kind of data can be used in order to refine stories, um, which is created by the brands. So in addition, inclusion of third party data, such as data collected by GSM operators or internet providers might be integrated to storytelling process and can enrich it um, theoretically. With the help of that, brand stories might be de delivered to individuals in uh, target audience in specific contexts. So, as Jorgen Sen and his friends pointed out, consumer is in control in today's world and requests uh, far more than physical satisfaction while they are buying a product or service. However, consumers are equipped with digital tools uh, which are brought by digital transformation and they create more data while they are trying to be in control and you know I told that it's a kind of cycle and now consumers uh, create feedbacks from uh, social networks uh, they read the blogs uh, before purchasing something and even they have uh, running shoes uh, with sensors which can be synchronized with smartphone applications and they use smart swatches uh, which can track daily activities and so on. So this digital transformation and rise in data production allow brands to have better possibilities in order to take advantage while producing a brand story. <clears throat> and assignments. <clears throat> um, now we are finalizing our uh, webinar, but I have to state some important things about uh, your last week's uh, assignments. Uh, in your fourth and last assignment, you will be working as teams again. So result of this assignment will compose 25% of your final points. And when it comes to format of assignment, um, at the first stage, I wanted to receive this assignment as PowerPoint slides. However, I thought that uh, there would be need for space. A space. Uh, so I kindly request you to write a report up to uh, 1,500 words um, because I just realized that uh, you are inclined to write a longer text on the word. Um, so this is a better option for all of us. And uh, the format of assignment is uh, more convenient for word text, actually. So while you are writing your assignment, uh, you should look to this assignment with um, integrative lenses. Um, I mean, just think about what you have learned about content marketing and storytelling in previous um, week and in this webinar. Then uh, try to merge them up uh, with the, what you have learned about big data, data analytics, and creating uh, value through data issues, okay? So this is what I am expecting uh, from you. So and main theme of the assignment is what are the crossroads of big data and pull strategies and how can big data contribute to this process? Um, when I say pull strategies, you can just uh, 
imagine content marketing, storytelling, and these kind of disciplines, okay? Um, so, do you have any questions? Yeah, you don't have questions? Yeah, I'm listening. Um, actually, you don't have to cho choose a brand um, in this assignment uh, because, you know, it is more like I'm curious about your theoretical perspective, how you can merge up uh, content marketing issues and storytelling with the big data, uh, what you can propose. So I'm just wondering uh, your theoretical creativity. No, it won't be in PPT. It will be Word documents, uh, which contains a maximum 1,500 words. Yes, Peter, you have to write uh, a kind of essay. Just try to, uh, Marina, you have to find some kind of intersection uh, points um, of big data and storytelling, as I mentioned in this webinar. So, for example, um, by big data analytics, uh, you can identify your target audience better. Or you can, um, by mining the big data, you can um, segment your target audience better. So this can, um, for example, uh, improve the quality of your content marketing uh, strategy and so on. So is it clear right now, uh, Ms. Latevska, or? Okay. Hold a minute. No, you won't um, create both uh, PPT and essay. You will only write Word documents, okay? There will be no presentation, there will be no PPT. So For minimum scope, uh, I can say that it will be 1,000 words. So, Vesna, I can uh, not clearly understand you what you mean uh, by uh, transposing data into story. Can you uh, give more detail about it? Yes. I mean, I just simply ask um, where big data meets with or where might uh, big data meet with uh, content marketing or storytelling or in overall uh, branding strategy. So, yeah, 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 clearly, yeah. Refer to connection of data with a storytelling process or a storytelling strategy. Yeah, welcome, Ms. Popolska. So, is there any more question?
Okay. I thank you too for your participation and I wish you good night. So and I'm just wishing success to all of you in your uh, assignment writing process. As I told before, um, just do not hesitate to contact with me if you have any question in your mind. Okay? So goodbye.